And I'm going to share my screen. <clears throat> Optimize screen. Oh, there, there that is. OK. And there's share computer. OK, I've got it all figured out. Thank you for bearing with me. So hang on just a sec. OK, so I'm going to get started here. I want to make this really interactive, folks. Um, we are recording, but if you feel comfortable um, taking yourselves off of mute um, or even turning on your video, you're welcome to do so. Um, we're among friends here and, and can chat about exciting study abroad opportunities. Um, so we have um, about an hour. Um, what I'm going to try to do is to run through a, um, a presentation that uh, touches on CIS abroad, who we are, uh, what we offer, um, and how you can get involved. And then um, at any point in time, if you have questions, please feel free to um, take yourself off mute or drop your questions into the chat. Um, and if someone, if, if the, one of the study abroad staff wouldn't mind um, interrupting me, if there's a, a message in chat, um, feel free to do that. I would appreciate it as I'm not able to see the chat as I, uh, as I present. Um, any questions before we get started? Okay. All right, we will get going here. All right, so thank you for joining us. Uh, this presentation is called So You Want to Study Abroad, an introduction. Um, as I mentioned, we have uh, a few ways that you can reach out to CIS Abroad and get connected with one of our advising team. So in the top left corner, there's a QR code. Um, feel free to scan that and it'll take you to our website. Also, this bit.ly link will do the same as well. Um, and you can just get connected with our advising team um, and on our email list. Uh, so feel free to do that if you would like. And then next, uh, just a brief introduction of who I am. So my name is Kent Moore, Director of University Relations at CIS Abroad. Um, in Study Abroad, we like to talk about uh, where we had our undergraduate experiences. Um, and I wanted to, to share my undergraduate experiences in study abroad were in Spain, Thailand, and India. And that's a photo of me when I had a lot more hair back in the day um, in Southeast Asia, traveling from my, uh, my program in Thailand. Um, and I did my graduate degree in the Netherlands and I've been with CIS abroad since 2015. And in that time, we've had um, quite a few um, students from the state of Kentucky study abroad and intern abroad with us. Um, so I'm excited to connect with all of you and I'm um, looking forward to sharing some information about what we offer and how you can get involved. So uh, today what we're going to cover, um, why CIS abroad, some general information there, um, where are our programs um, and, and um, how can you find one that fits for you uh, from a geographical point of view, but also what's available in your major and minor. How can you find a program that matches with, um, with your academic goals? We're also going to touch on um, virtual programs just briefly and then uh, talk about funding and then what's the what the process is like as well. So I have a quick video. I think with the settings I, I was able to to make this work so audio will play. So I'm going to play this quick video. It just features some CS abroad students uh, speaking about why they chose to study abroad. Um, and I think there's some nice content here. So let's watch this quick video um, and feel free to or, or please let me know if for any reason you're not able to to hear audio or see the video. Appreciate it. Going abroad, you just you get a whole new view and you become your own person, you have your own thoughts, you see different things and you start to develop who you want to be as a person. I think as young adults, a lot of people are hounding down on us to tell us what to think or what to do and what box to fill. And that's not, that's not what I wanted to do. So going abroad, it allowed me to become the person I knew I could be, but I didn't know the stepping stones to get there.
I wholeheartedly believe that knowledge is power and you can only gain knowledge by looking things up and trying to just like, you know, get perspectives outside of what you've grown up knowing. I am the only one in my family, siblings, I have two siblings and both my parents and my grandparents have never been out of the United States. Um, I, for me personally, I had never been off the East Coast until I came on this trip. I feel like it just gave me a little bit more confidence because, uh, you know, I did this thing, you kind of, I think any time you have to do something that's a little bit newer, like something you've never done, it requires like a leap of faith and a little bit of courage. I think it's easy to get wrapped up in everything that you know and to not really think about the world outside of it. So like getting here, I see so many people living different lifestyles and we were even talking before this about like moving somewhere else, like outside yeah. of the US or outside of like the Northeast where I'm from, like mm -hmm. everything like that. And I was like, I don't know if I'm like bold enough to do something like that, but being here, I'm like seeing people who come from all different places and have done different things and have seen the world and everything. And I'm like, I can do that, why wouldn't I? <laughs> Honestly, I, I've only like seen life through a small lens, like lived in a little bubble of Ohio, um, you know, gone to a, a, a school in my state. I haven't really seen a whole lot of the world. I really just want to expand myself and, and kind of get to know the world. Wanting to be a journalist, the whole experience or the whole career is about uh, learning how to talk to people and being able to communicate effectively with them and being able to do that in another country where you don't speak the language and you're learning about other people's culture and you have to respect their way of living it's like getting all that all at once and um, yeah it's been very um, enlightening for me become like a completely different person as dramatic as that seems like it really changes the way you like think and like for me the way I interact like the way I see the world it changes like everything for me so I feel like having that experience is like invaluable regardless of like where you go abroad. Okay, um, so thanks for thanks for watching that. I, I, that's one of my favorite videos. We have a great uh, YouTube channel um, full of really great content, um, and and that's one of my favorites for for all the reasons um, for all the students talking about their own experiences. Um, a lot of those really resonate with me, and I hope they do with you as well. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about um, kind of the elephant in the room, and that is COVID nineteen. Um, it's obviously um, changed a lot about um, all of our lives um, and, and study abroad is no different. Um, I think we can't really ignore the fact that um, COVID-19 and the pandemic has, has disrupted study abroad in a way um, that we didn't really anticipate. Um, but I think at CIS and, and I'm sure in all of uh, the education abroad offices at, at your institutions, um, we think that the the lessons the benefits of going overseas and pursuing an education are just as important and even more so now um, in, in this time where we all feel a little bit disconnected than they were before the pandemic um, so that's why CIS abroad is very committed to reopening education abroad programs uh, and we're starting actually this spring so um, if anyone on the call is is interested in spring 2021 programming um, we're we're very much um, we're, interested in speaking with you about, about your plans. Um, this slide has a little bit about our kind of approach to study abroad during this kind of exceptional time. So we have developed a three-step risk mitigation process um, by our risk management and emergency response team, which you can see on our website. Uh, I won't dig into the details here, but essentially it allows us to uh, really focus in on a certain, a small number of programs where we feel confident students are going to not only be safe and, and healthy, um, but also be able to continue, continue their academics, um, programs that have um, really beneficial refund policies and things like that, um, that kind of lend themselves well to, to the situation that we're in. So you can see the open programs on our website at cisabroad.com um, at any time. So feel free to check that out. 
And if you're looking for maybe a future term, if you're uh, a freshman or sophomore, and you're looking for 2022 programs or beyond, um, we're very much still accepting applications for those now. Um, but for, for the short term, we have developed some site-specific risk management plans, which you can find on the program webpage of the program that you're interested in, and a, a very updated and very clear refund policy. Um, we want to make sure students are, are feeling, uh, students and their parents and, and administrators are, are feeling confident about the decision to go abroad and confident that if something goes wrong for any reason, uh, they'll be able to gain back uh, as, as big a refund as, as they can on their program fee. So I'm happy to take questions about spring study abroad as we kind of go through this uh, or at the end. So feel free to drop your questions in now in the chat if you'd like. So why CIS abroad? Uh, so we're the Center for International Studies Abroad based in Massachusetts. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned before, I'm personally based in North Carolina as part of our university relations team. Um, we just celebrated our, our 20th anniversary this year. Uh, and for 20 years, we've been providing really transformative international experiences for students across the country. Um, so what do we offer just really quickly? We have January term programs, summer programs, intern abroad opportunities, semester programs, and uh, new this year, uh, virtual programs, which we'll talk about towards the end. So what we provide, um, really, we're really focused on uh, high value programs. That means affordable programs, but also opportunities to pack in tons of chances to uh, connect with local culture. Um, support, you're gonna be supported throughout the experience by uh, not only our staff here in the US, but our site directors on each, um, in each program location. Um, culture is absolutely fundamental to uh, all of our programs, uh, exploring culture, and we're gonna talk about that as well in the next one. And then academics, of course, there's no study abroad without the study part. Um, and we have, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what academics look like uh, on our programs in just a little bit. So why CIS? There, there are a few things that uh, for me really stand out. And one is affordability. Uh, I could not have studied abroad even once uh, as an undergraduate uh, student if I had not had access to very affordable programs. Um, that was important for me and I'm sure it's important for a lot of you as well. Um, we believe study abroad is absolutely for everyone and, and we try to keep our program fees uh, as low as possible. Um, the second reason is support. Um, so what I love about the program model that we offer is that you're an American student, but you're taking classes at a foreign institution, not in a, a, not in a small American bubble, but you're taking classes among local students. Uh, you, your housing might be among local students as well, or students from all over the world. So you have a level of independence that is, uh, might be new for a lot of students, but also, um, our site directors are there every step of the way from literally from the moment you get off the airplane to pick you up at the airport. Uh, so for those students who are looking for independence, but also those students who would like to have uh, that support person there close at hand, uh, I think our programs are a really good fit. And then cultural immersion, you know, I spoke about this just a second ago, um, but cultural immersion is foundational to our programs and we build in opportunities to explore uh, locally and even internationally sometimes uh, on our programs through excursions and cultural activities and things like that. And I wanted to kind of just shamelessly plug some of our recent awards from um, uh, websites like goabroad.com and gooverseas.com and others. Um, if you haven't uh, visited these resources, they're, they're pretty neat. I used uh, goabroad.com when I was a student back in the day. Um, some really nice articles and resources, uh, connections to different scholarships and things that are really beneficial. Okay, so uh, what can you do abroad and, and when and where? Um, we, have, we offer 120 programs around the world and, com and can accommodate 88 different majors. So there are a lot of opportunities out there. And obviously we can't talk about all those, uh, but I'm gonna give you a brief overview kind of continent by continent uh, where our programs are located. So starting in Europe, we have programs in eight countries um, and 15 cities for a total of 60 programs. You can see the, the highlighted ones there in orange are where we offer programming. So I just wanted to highlight a few um, of my favorites. London, England, we have two programs there. One is at the University of Westminster and the other one is, in, uh, is at the University of Roehampton, just outside of London. We have uh, more partners, universities than I can really 
uh, have time to name right now in Barcelona. Uh, it's one of our, our biggest uh, locations for hosting students. Um, and for good reason, because it's a spectacular city. It's a great place to um, learn Spanish, take chemistry classes, all sorts of things. And we have amazing on-site staff there as well. And then in Florence, Italy, um, we partner with Florence University of the Arts. Um, so this program is great for any students looking for semester opportunity or summer. Um, not only studying in the arts, but business, communications, hospitality, all sorts of subjects. And then for Asia and Africa, sorry, Asia Pacific and Africa, um, we offer programs in seven countries. You can see them highlighted here. Um, I always like to point out Cape Town, a spectacular location. Um, we work with the University of Cape Town, which is the number one university in all of Africa, um, the whole continent, and also the University of Stellenbosch, um, or Stellenbosch University, excuse me. Um, in Australia, we have a lot of programs. Um, one of the most popular is at Bond University on the Gold Coast, um, very close to the Great Barrier Reef. So students spend a lot of time in the water um, on different islands and things like that off the coast of Australia. And then my personal favorite is uh, our program in Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, it's our most affordable semester program. Um, and it's just jam packed with so many opportunities to explore this amazing country that uh, just on a personal, personal note kind of transformed me when I was an undergrad. Uh, I came back and knew um, I, I had to change paths and, and uh, pursue a, a career in international education because of this experience. Um, so highly recommended looking into that program. Also can accommodate a, a very large range of uh, majors. And then they're not highlighted here, but we also have programs in Vietnam, Japan, and South Korea. And then for the Americas, we have programs in uh, five different countries. Um, one program that uh, maybe is a little surprising or uncommon is our program in Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, our founder studied at Hawaii Pacific University, and this is uh, kind of a legacy of his, his experience there. Um, what's perfect about this program, especially in the situation that we're in with travel restrictions, is that students don't need um, a visa or even a passport to, uh, to visit Hawaii. So definitely worth looking into that one. And then in Argentina, uh, we have a program in Buenos Aires. Uh, one of my favorite of our site directors, Marina, is uh, the site director for this program um, and just a wonderful person to, to be that cultural bridge between students and her, her home city. And then the last kind of highlighted program is in San Jose, Costa Rica um, at Veritas, uh, which is a great university, has programs or excuse me, can accommodate students from uh, subjects as diverse as uh, business, art, um, environmental science, all sorts of things. And then I want to touch briefly on experiential learning programs. So um, think not taking classes abroad. Think um, you know programs where you're getting your hands dirty uh, in an internship or uh, teaching English as a foreign language or doing service learning. So an intern abroad program is one where you have a customized internship. Um, so it's, um, we literally have an, a Skype interview with, with each student who participates in these programs. And we get at, you know, what are your goals now uh, for when you graduate from college? Uh, what sort of work setting would you like to be in? What skills do you want to gain? And we find a placement for them that matches that. And you can see um, hundreds of placement examples on our website. So I would recommend looking into those if you're at all interested in a a little less traditional uh, experience, but one that would look fantastic on a resume. Uh, another option is our teaching English as a foreign language programs. So uh, you're actually in a classroom teaching during this program uh, and you gain a TEFL certificate that you can be, uh, that can be used anywhere in the world. Um, great for education majors or anyone who just wants to try on, you know, living in another country for a little while uh, and working there. And then service learning programs. Um, so this is, service learning goes well beyond um, a volunteer experience. It's, uh, students get involved in mutually beneficial uh, projects uh, through these programs and earned, uh, earn academic credit as well. So virtual programming. Um, you might have heard a little bit about virtual study abroad and I think early on in, in 
this COVID-19 era, I think virtual study abroad sounded like a joke almost. How could you study abroad virtually? Um, but it's quickly become a very viable option for students who are not able to travel for whatever reason, um, but are looking into an opportunity to still have access to global learning um, and, and experiences that are really impactful. So virtual internships, we have two different models of these. They're just like um, on-site internships, except that um, the work is actually being done remotely via, via Zoom and uh, other applications like that. So these are four to six week experiences. You're working uh, 15 to 30 hours a week and you can do it alongside coursework. Um, so if you're looking for something to boost your resume and, and really gain experience in a field um, that you're passionate, passionate about, I would look into these. Um, they're very affordable as well. And then we have an, a range of virtual study programs as well. So you can take classes online through our partner universities. And we'll be offering those um, every term going forward. Actually, even if, uh, even after kind of the, the pandemic era, we will be offering virtual internships because we've seen that they're, uh, it's a valuable program model for not only for students who can't travel, but for students who um, are interested in, in doing global learning from home. So I said I wanted to touch on academics. I'm gonna do that briefly here. Um, so academics at CIS abroad, um, typically the, the default for our programs is that you're studying at universities, uh, host, sorry, local universities um, where um, host country nationals are, are studying primarily. They're the primary uh, student body. So these can range anywhere from um, small private institutions to large publics. Um, so you have a range of choices there. Taking classes with locals, um, and we can accommodate, you know, whether you're on a semester calendar or quarter or trimester during the summer. If you have a January term at your institution, we can accommodate you there as well. And then for internships, um, you, as I mentioned a second ago, you participate in uh, inter internships in one of uh, 21 career focused fields. Um, so, so for example, an English major, um, we, we don't have, for example, this, this 21 uh, career focused fields doesn't include things like English. It includes things like journalism. Uh, so it's not academic fields, but career fields, uh, just to help you really kind of hone in on what sort of experience you want to have. And then at CISabroad.com, we have a fantastic um, search tool for, for programming. So I recommend checking this out. It's, I have some screenshots on the right, um, but you'll see that you can hover over find a program and then find by academic major and just click on whatever is most relevant to your academic uh, field. And then you can really hone in from there on, so not communications generally, but say advertising or film studies or digital media and design. Um, you can pair that with searches for particular countries and terms and really hone in on, on what program is going to be the best for you. So I want to talk a little bit about funding opportunities, but first, one question I often get from students is what's included in program fees? Um, so at CIS Abroad, all basically our program fee includes everything that you might need for a study abroad experience, except for uh, your flight. Um, spending money, of course, and uh, meals on site. And there's even an asterisk over the meals part because uh, in certain locations where you, do a, uh, where you choose to do a homestay, um, meals are included through the homestay. Um, so something to look into, if, uh, particularly if you're interested in language acquisition, I would recommend a homestay experience. Um, but in, in terms of the program fee itself, tuition and fees, housing, all of those things, uh, excursions throughout your term abroad are included. And this briefly just touches on some uh, financial aid and, and uh, funding opportunities. So we have a number of scholarships and grants that you can check out on our website. We do promo codes. So one that I know is up right now is bring a friend. So if you're interested in potentially studying abroad with a friend or a roommate, um, you can use that to save some money on your program fee. Um, and then I would highly recommend checking with your um, the study abroad office or financial aid office on your home campus about how your particular financial aid package could apply to study abroad. 
And lastly, if your campus is uh, an affiliate of CIS abroad, we have automatic discounts for you. So again, check with your study abroad office uh, to clarify that. So uh, we're wrapping up now um, in terms of the presentation, but I wanted to talk briefly about what the process is like to apply to study abroad. So I've broken it down very simply here. Um, number one, just visit cisabroad.com and check out some programs that interest you, do a bit of research. We have tons of great um, content, including videos, um, housing tours with students, introductions to site directors, um, course listings, and more. Um, and then speak with your study abroad office at your home institution, and then you'll begin your application. Um, typically, you'll apply to study abroad through CIS abroad, um, but also through your home institution at the same time. So keep that in mind. Oh, and yes, visit uh, on our website, look for this apply now button. If you're looking for even more information on um, how to, how it works, how, how to apply for study abroad and, and even what happens when you get on site and when you return home. Um, we have a great video series on our YouTube channel that I mentioned earlier, um, taking you all the way through the process. So definitely check that out. This is um, some information about how you can contact CIS abroad. If you'd like to get in touch with our advising team or schedule an appointment to speak. Um, also, feel free to follow us on all of these platforms. Um, Insta our Instagram is, is quite good. Uh, props to my, my colleagues on our marketing team. Uh, <laughs> but I would love to tr kind of transition away from the presentation format into questions. Um, so at this time, if you would like, feel free to take yourself off of mute um, and, and shout out a question. Happy to take it now. I'm also going to put up the, pull up the chat and see if there are any questions. First question, oh, the link to fill out. Um, I believe that that's just a link um, provided by, by Bryson. Um, if you can fill that out, that will, that will help out um, everyone here so that we can follow up. Um, any recommended programs for pre-med? Pre-med, um, yeah, I think if you're in, it depends on what classes you, you need to take. If you're looking for a study abroad program where you, you need to take, um, you know, kind of those foundational courses, um, you know, anatomy and physiology or chemistry or biology or, or whatever it is, um, we can accommodate you in, in quite a few different areas, um, in quite a few different locations. I would recommend Australia primarily uh, for, for pre-med um, foundational courses. And then if you're looking for uh, kind of a valuable, valuable internship experience, we have a number of locations where we can accommodate pre-med majors in a, a shadowing capacity. So you're actually in a clinic or a hospital setting, um, kind of shadowing um, nurses and doctors to, uh, to learn more about the profession. Uh, and those programs would be uh, intern in Chiang Mai in Northern Thailand working in clinics in a rural setting there. Uh, I think in, in Vietnam as well, potentially in Quito, Ecuador, and also in Australia. Uh, fashion merchandising. Ooh, these are good questions. Keep them coming, guys. Um, fashion merchandising. Uh, first and foremost, our, our Florence program comes to mind. Um, Florence is uh, it's great because it's, it's a focus of the university as a, as a Florence as an arts university there. Um, they're focused on um, visual art, but also things like fashion. Um, so that stands out. Also our program in, um, in London, I think would be a good fit at the Westminster or Roehampton probably as well. Um, and then for, for internships, I would recommend intern in Barcelona. For, uh, for a placement in, in that field, but also intern in Florence as well. Criminology, sociology, or political science? Yeah, good questions. Um, okay, so I think for criminology, you'd want to look into uh, our programs in the UK. 
So that is London, um, Edinburgh, um, and even in, in Ireland as well, I would say the programs in uh, Dublin and Limerick would be a good fit. Um, also South Africa. And then uh, for political science, or well, sociology, I suppose, Thailand stands out, our Australia programs. Really in Australia, you can study pretty much anything. The, the partner universities that we have there have very comprehensive course catalogs, and I would recommend checking those out. Um, you can actually see what courses are listed if you go to the academics tab on, on CISabroad.com's program pages um, and see what you might, what might work for your degree. For political science, um, I would say our program in Prague at Charles University. Um, Charles University is one of the oldest institutions in Europe. Um, it's a couple, a few hundred years old and um, they really focus on the social sciences. So I recommend that for political science. Um, again, the UK is, is quite a strong option. Um, a program in Aix-en-Provence, France would be a nice fit. And then Thailand, again, is, is good. They have an interesting course about the politics of um, the Association of Southeast, Southeastern Asian Nations. Um, that would be interesting. So those are just a few ideas. Um, but if anyone has, you know, if is curious about their major, uh, feel free to shout out what it is. And I'm happy to see if I know off the top of my head of any recommendations. How much should someone save when studying abroad? That is a good question. Um, that's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull up a resource on the website that is quite useful. Okay, um, while I'm doing that, I'm gonna take these other questions. So special education, early childhood. Um, for education, I would say Aust Australia and New Zealand particularly strong. Ireland is very good, uh, particularly Limerick. Um, so look into the program at Limerick. It's very close to the Cliffs of Moher. If you've ever kind of seen a postcard of Ireland, it might have had the Cliffs of Moher, um, this beautiful um, seaside location. Um, check out that one. And then other education. As I mentioned, our TEFL programs, teaching English as a foreign language, um, is is a unique program model where you actually gain classroom experiences. Um, and, you know, to take charge of a classroom, you know, uh, in another country, I think is pretty powerful. And to do so delivering content that's, that's really valued by the people that you're speaking with is a pretty neat experience for an education major. Um, and a lot of these, a lot of these settings are in um, kind of elementary education type settings. So I wanted to take you to, um, to a resource that gets at um, how much students should save for study abroad. So this is, by the way, our um, find a program tool. So let's say I wanted to look at Costa Rica. Um, you can see our Costa Rica program here. Or if I wanted to do, say I'm interested in a few locations and I'm a engineering and business student. Um, you can see the, uh, all the, the programs that are a good fit for that. Okay, so I got off track there. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm showing you a resource that has to do with funding. So on the bottom of each of our program pages, you will find this little link here, and it takes you to additional expenses. So if you're interested in a semester program, you can click this one and it takes you to a spreadsheet that lists that kind of breaks down each program fee into you know what is what portion of it is tuition and fees what portion is of accommodation all of that uh, and goes program by program but also on this other tab looks at additional expenses um, so you can see here if you're going to Argentina 
how much would you need to budget for meals or books and supplies or uh, transportation throughout the program, the visa, uh, it breaks this all down program by program in, um, in a very helpful way. Uh, I refer to this a lot, uh, as do our, our partners uh, at, in study abroad offices around the country. I would recommend checking this out if you're interested in any particular program, uh, just to get a sense of how much you need to, to save. And obviously it has to do with your financial aid package and things like that. Um, so just to do a little planning, make a spreadsheet of your own perhaps, um, and speak with your uh, financial aid office on campus can go a long way. Okay, um, speech pathology and communication disorders. That is a good one. Let's, let's actually use the, the program search tool. And we'll just go to communications. I'm not sure where that would be actually. Oh, there it is. Okay, it's under health. So speech pathology and communication disorders. Um, it looks like these are the programs that we would recommend. And that's good because I didn't know off the top of my head. So semester in Melbourne, Australia, um, Sydney, Australia, um, another program in Australia uh, that is in Sydney, University of Sydney, and then this program at James Cook University is way up in the northeast, um, very close to the Great Barrier Reef at James Cook University. Um, so I hope you like Australia uh, for the student who is in uh, speech pathology and communication disorders. Um, but again, a, lo a lot of students, um, you know, sometimes are, are maybe not in a position to pursue courses in their major specifically, but maybe they want to do a summer program and take, um, you know, knockout classes for their Spanish minor or, um, or take general education courses for a semester as a sophomore or something like that. Um, so that is certainly an option. Um, and you could use this search function to check out, you know, what programs might work for your um, you know, your English 102 or, or whatever it might be. Okay, um, Maria asks, um, can we choose the length of time for programs or is it already set? I mean, semester full semester programs versus eight week programs. Yeah, good question. So the timing of, uni or of, um, of programs um, and how long they are. So this varies country by country. So since we have Australia pulled up here, I'll just mention uh, the case there. Typically in Australia, um, the semesters don't line up particularly well with the US calendar. Um, so we can, let's just look at the dates here. So our spring 21 program is just suspended at this particular institution. But if it had run, it would go from February 17th to June 26th. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're looking in, um, in Australia at programs. And another reason why actually our program at Bond University in Australia is nice because they work on a trimester calendar, uh, which lines up pretty nicely with the academic calendar here in the US. Um, but different universities have different lengths of programs. Um, I would say most of them, if it's a semester option, are uh, between 12 and 16 weeks. Um, so they would tend, I think, to line up quite nicely with the academic calendar at your institution. And then if you're interested in a summer program, um, these can range anywhere from uh, two weeks all the way to two months. It really depends um, what you're looking for. And again, each university has their own uh, calendar that they're working off of. So for example, our, our program in Japan at Seisen University in Tokyo, which I can just go to here, is um, it's comprised of a few two-week sessions. So 
if you wanted to do a two-week session and just get a taste of um, of Japan, you could do that, or you could combine sessions. So you can see here someone in Tokyo. You could combine two sessions to make uh, a month-long experience, or three sessions to do a six-week term. All right. Difficult to pack. Some, someone asks, is it difficult to pack for an experience abroad? Uh, it certainly was for me. Um, I've, I've learned a lot about packing over the years. I would recommend, and this is a bit cliche, but pack uh, as much as you think you need and then take out half of it and zip up your suitcase and go uh, is, is kind of the advice that I was given, which I scoffed at when I was in college. Um, but I think there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of wisdom in that. Um, you don't need as much as you think you need. Uh, obviously, you want to take into account weather and, and changes um, in weather throughout the semester. Um, but yeah, T typically, if, if I were to pack now for a semester abroad, I would pack for about a week and a half, a trip of a week and a half, and call it a day. Because you can always do laundry. Um, you can always you know, buy anything that you, you feel like you need once you're there on site. Um, so yeah, that's, that's just my philosophy, but I'm sure others have, uh, have different thoughts. I, w I once, uh, helped out with a, a faculty led program of nine days and, um, a student came with two 50 pound suitcases, uh, and <laughs> she was miserable <laughs> because we had to, to lug those suitcases. Um, between hotels because this is a traveling program. So don't be that person. I, I would recommend just, just packing lightly. You'll be a lot happier. Anyone, so that's the extent of the, the chat messages. Feel free to keep sending those through, but would anyone like to um, take themselves off mute and, and just say hi or, or talk about, you know, what, what they're interested in doing overseas? We have, I think almost 20 folks on and you're all shy and that's fine. I, I'm okay with that, um, but keep sending your questions through. Um, one question I get a lot is um, around just how this all works because study abroad can seem, um, can seem like a lot of process and forms and visas and passports uh, and it can seem kind of daunting. Um, so one thing that, that I like to point out is this How It Works page on our website, and it does feature that video series that I referenced earlier. Um, we really want to kind of simplify the process, uh, and at CIS Abroad, we make it pretty simple. Um, to get started, you, you literally just click Apply. It's in the top corner of our website. We have a $90 application deposit, so it's not a fee, it's, it's a deposit towards your program. Um, and once you uh, submit that and some initial information, which you can do in literally 10 minutes, um, you can uh, kind of get started on the rest of your application. So you're introduced to your program coordinator in our main office in Massachusetts. Uh, and from there, um, you know, we do things like course approval and um, advisor approval so that your, your university knows that you're going abroad um, and, and everything like that transcripts, et cetera. So this page is, is a nice one if you, if you feel just kind of lost and not sure where to go next. Um, each video is like two minutes and takes you through every part of it. Let me think of what other common questions I can Kind of answer preemptively. Oh, one, one, um, well, let me touch on this first. So often we get questions about deadlines. Um, so what, what deadlines are there out there? We can actually, actually have a, so you can see a nice, um, quick list of all application deadlines 
uh, via this web page. Um, just minimize this. Let's see. Okay, so you can see like application dates, um, arrival date, departure date, program feeds all in one place. So, for example, this, uh, this program in Argentina suspended for spring 21. That's just temporary. It will run in future terms. Um, but if it were running this coming spring, the deadline would be November 1st. So typically that's what you're looking at for spring programs, a deadline of uh, anywhere between October 1st and November 15th. Um, and that's the deadline to submit that initial application. And then if there are pieces of your application that take longer, that's fine as well. We can, we can work with you after uh, that date has passed. But you'll just want to get your initial application in at the start. For summer programs, um, let's see if we can find one. Summer in Costa Rica. So uh, the program starts on June 1st and the application deadline is April 1st. Um, so something to keep in mind as you plan for maybe next summer. I would be curious to know if anyone out there is planning to study abroad in 2021. Um, and you know what your plans are or you, you know are there barriers that you feel like you're facing now um, as you as you try to make plans for study abroad. Feel free to drop those in the chat. I know there might be students on as well that are planning for further out into 2022 and even 23. But if you are looking for an open program for spring 2021, as I mentioned during the presentation, we have a very limited group of opportunities, um, particularly for this term. So it's not our full course or our full program catalog, um, but a set of 18 programs that you can participate on. And in each of these locations, we've fully vetted um, the risk management on site. Our university has, uh, our partner university there has um, agreed to provide single room housing. Uh, and most, most of these locations, I think there are a couple of exceptions. Um, but if it's, if it's a double, it's, you know, um, kind of a, a double uh, housing situation that has been, has been vetted for health and safety. Um, so you'll see here a lot of programs in, well, we've really spread them out across the world. So South Korea, Scotland, uh, Australia, Czech Republic, Thailand, Tokyo. So we're accepting applications for all these options currently. Let me just click on my favorite program, Thailand, because it's my secret mission to, to get you all to study abroad in Thailand, as I did as a student. <laughs> I'm looking for, this is a question in the chat, I'm looking for a summer or fall 2021 program. Is it possible at all? Absolutely. Um, we're, we're still in the planning phases for spring 2021. So if you're looking for fall or summer 2021, you have plenty of time to, to make your plans. Um, so I would, first of all, just do a bit of research online, schedule a time, whether it's in person or, or virtually, depending on your campus, with your education abroad office. Um, and an advisor would, I'm sure, be pleased to speak with you. We have a number of them um, on the call today. Um, so you might connect in a, in a private chat message about setting up an appointment even here. Um, but yeah, it's not too early to, to plan for summer or fall. Can I ask a follow-up question with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, like I'm more saying like, cause of Corona, like a lot of the ones you showed us were like suspended. Right. So how do we like plan and just hope that it gets unsuspended? Does that make sense? Good question, yeah. So for, um, as I mentioned for spring, we've suspended a lot of our programs because of COVID-19. For summer and fall 2021, we currently plan to um, plan to run our full ca catalog of programs, um, but it is we're at such an early stage now. You probably won't find the application uh, visible on our website right now. So I'm going to scroll down to fall 
No, oh, actually it is available. So fall 2021, you can see uh, that we're currently accepting applications for that. Same for summer. Um, so I would say identify a program that interests you. So much is changing about um, the current situation that there will likely be changes in, in what's possible, what programs are running, what programs are not running, all the way up until you know um, next spring um, for summer programs. So I would advise you now to, to look into a few programs that interest you, have a backup option, um, but proceed as you would, uh, as if we weren't in a global pandemic in terms of searching for programs for late next year or beyond that. Hopefully that helps kind of answer your question. It did, thank you. Awesome. Um, so for spring 2021, I just wanted to show you what our program fees are like. So this is, uh, you can see our program fees here. As I mentioned, Thailand is our most affordable semester option. Um, so this is inclusive of uh, tuition, housing, excursions, academic credit, everything really, except for your flights. Um, and for spring 2021, Thailand, the country of Thailand has imposed a 14 day quarantine period for new arrivals. Um, and it actually sounds okay because student, or not students, anyone visiting Thailand must quarantine for two weeks and it has to be in a specific um, set of three star or four star hotels. Um, there's no other option. That's what the country, the government of Thailand has said. Um, so um, as in, in an effort to help students plan for studying there in the spring, um, we are including a 14 day uh, quarantine kind of package um, so that when you arrive in Thailand, you'll be taken straight to this one of these hotels um, and you'll quarantine there for two weeks um, before the program starts. So we're having to kind of be nimble and come up with things, creative solutions to problems that we have never really faced before. Um, but that's across study abroad, not just at CIS. So I wanted to, a little bit ago, I was gonna point out our student blog. Uh, we have a really active and, and nice student blog. Um, if you're looking for, you know, just hearing from a peer, um, I would recommend visiting this site. Um, it has, oh, there's one for you, Ashley. Can I study abroad in 2021? Uh, check, that, check that blog post out. Um, you know, these are students describing what their virtual internships were like this, this past summer. Um, student uh, who had studied in South Korea previously wrote a blog for us. So when I was a student, I, I just was so, um, so keen on the experience that I went looking for resources all over the place. Um, and I would visit blogs just like this quite a bit um, because there's some great content here. And it's great to hear from other students who, you know, have been where you feel like, you know, you want to go. So definitely check those out. All right. Um, anyone else with, with questions that are, uh, with burning questions they want to uh, unmute themselves and, and chime in with? I want to, um, if not, I have a little video not this video again. Um, a little video that has to do with interning abroad. Um, Particularly, interning abroad is particularly useful uh, or valuable, I think, during the summer term when you don't have uh, classes to take at your home university during a semester. Um, so I actually love this video uh, that features students from in South Africa talking about their internship um, placements there. We only have a few minutes left of the call, 
but I'm going to play a little bit of this uh, video at least. And then if there are any questions, feel free to drop those in the chat now and we will uh, address those. When Ship at No Danger Diaries. Hi, uh, my name is Manuel Block. My name is Sierra. My name is Ricky Lydon. I'm from Loyola University of Chicago. What is the Connecticut? Endicott College. I am a major in political science. I'm here in my internship right now. We are an accelerator for star companies. I worked with Surplus People Project. I'm doing an internship at No Danger Diaries. Surplus People Project, the office there, they're just so welcoming. It's a nonprofit organization that works with land reform, agroecology, and uh, social justice in general. They work on creating new workshops for the youth in different parts of Cape Town. Being there with them and getting to notice how they try to mobilize the youth is really awesome. It's a very positive atmosphere. They are very passionate in the work that they do and very focused, so going to work every day was awesome. Looking for an internship, I was more interested in looking with something towards sustainable development. I looked through a website called CIS Abroad. I never thought I would be able to go to some place like here. I chose to come to Cape Town for my internship just because it's such a different place from where I'm from. It's I mean, one of the most beautiful destinations in the world I've always wanted to go to. And I knew an internship, I'm going to be here for a couple months instead of just a week for a vacation. So I could actually experience the whole thing. No Danger Diaries is a social enterprise that just built on just sharing the joy. Charity events and do different tasks to just try and help people, just make people happy. I know from experience of trying to get jobs and internships, one of the biggest things is social media marketing. That's what they want out of our generation. And now having this actual experience is, I think it's gonna be really big. We have these events called Secret Sunrise. We bring a bunch of people together, give them headphones and make them run around, dance crazy and dress in costumes. It's an amazing time. At the Accelerator, we have nine startups and they're all varying. So our job is to help them get started and, and get funding. So it's definitely nice to be in a different setting and, and see how they do things and pick up what's better that they do and see what maybe we can improve at home. Because I wanted an internship that was international and that wasn't just your average, you know, I'm gonna go downtown Chicago and intern at a bank. It shows that you took the initiative to go abroad and you were willing to be someplace that the culture could be much different than yours. I never thought I'd do something like this. A lot of my friends had gone to Europe and Asia, and to me, going to South Africa sounded much cooler. At first, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, um, and now I have more of a steady path that I want to go down. The fact that I'm able to fit in somewhere else, a different company in, in a different part of the world, just shows that I'm adaptable and I can figure out different places. Every day when I walk through the door, I just sit there, I'm like, whoa, well, I'm here. Be open to trying new things, to meeting new people, stepping out of your comfort zone. I've been here for almost two months now and I haven't experienced even close to how much I want to do. I wasn't sure if I'd fit in, but after being here for several weeks, I definitely feel like I really do. You have to come, you have to see the real South Africa, the real Cape Town. All right, so thanks for, thanks for staying for the video. I, that was one of my favorites um, for, especially for students in, in uh, interning at all. Um, so it is seven Eastern now. So um, if you if you have to go, feel free. Um, if you have any last questions, um, feel free to, to let those uh, be known now. Awesome. Okay. So it doesn't look like there are any last ones. Um, so just want to say thank you all for joining. Um, this has been really good. Um, and I'm going to, to make the slides available.
to the study abroad office staff that are here. Um, and we'll try to get the recording as well. Um, so feel free to, to reach out um, if you'd like either of those. Um, have a great uh, evening, everyone. And you know, like I said, we're, we're kind of standing by to, to um, speak with you about your plans for study abroad. So feel free to reach out um, anywhere on cisabroad.com. Um, you can access uh, our advising team or, or email uh, me as well. Uh, thank you all, have a good evening.